Plough, so we'll start officially. And uh, my name is Jasper Kenter. Uh, I'm um, a researcher and senior lecturer at the University of York, and I'm also deputy coordinator for the Pericles project. So thanks very much for, for joining uh, this webinar. And today we'll have uh, Sarah Knight talking about the Pericles participatory mapping portal. So just one more time. Um, Oh, I was going to run. Could you pass it one more time back, Sarah? I'll just say just one more time about the Q&A and the chat function. If you have any te technical difficulties, please use the, the chat button at the bottom. Um, and Elaine and, and Lisa will try and help you out. If you have any questions for Sarah, uh, you can post them anytime during the webinar through clicking on the Q&A button. See if anybody, no, nobody's asked the question yet, fortunately. So we don't have anybody who's, uh, who's, 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 uh, who's got special mental powers to predetermine what she's going to be talking about. Um, so if you have any uh, questions, post them there, but you will also be able to see other people's questions and, and like them. So have a, now, have, a, have a look every now and then, um, and please also feel free to use social media uh, to engage with this webinar. Um, next slide then, please. So we have people from really all over the world uh, attending. So um, hopefully a few more people will, will join in. We've got 50 attendees now, uh, but 105 people from 20 countries have registered, including United Kingdom, Portugal, France, the Netherlands, Denmark, Greece, Estonia, Italy, Spain, Ireland, Canada, Poland, Algeria, India, Turkey, Kenya, Indonesia, Finland, Brazil, and uh, Lebanon. So it's, it's really impressive to, to see this engagement all over the world. Uh, lots of different kind of coastal countries there interested in maritime cultural heritage. Um, so with no further ado, I want to hand over to Sarah Knight. Uh, Sarah is a researcher at, uh, oh, uh, I forgot one thing. Thanks for reminding me, Sarah. We also have a number of upcoming webinars. Uh, after this one, 30th of September, uh, the ethnographic documentary that Pericles is producing, uh, which is a project led by uh, Luce Witteveen and Pauline van Tijl at the University of Wageningen. And in October, and the dates to be confir uh, confirmed, uh, Lara For Laura Ferguson from Queen's University in Belfast um, is talking about conserving Longbarian's Long cultural heritage and climate of change. And we'll put this back on the screen at the end of the webinar, uh, and you can see more information on the Pericles website. Um, so, um, Sarah, can you turn on your, your video so everybody can see you? So here's Sarah, and Sarah is a researcher at um, the University of York, uh, but she's also worked in policy, uh, charities, so she's got a very diverse uh, background. Um, her academic background is in, in GIS, in spatial analysis, spatial mapping, participatory mapping, and also in well-being, uh, on which she's just completing her, her PhD, as well as working for, for Pericles, as our kind of portal officer and also communications officer. Um, so handing over to, to Sarah now. Okay, thank you, Jasper. Um, as Jasper said, I'm Sarah Knight from the University of York and um, I'm the Pericles portal officer. Um, I'm going to basically take you on a nice tour around the Pericles portal, um, show you some of the functions and the tools and um, answer any questions that you may have at the end. So I'm going to I'm going to turn my video off. It's it's distracting me seeing my face. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So here we go. This is what I'll be talking about today with with you all. Um, so as you can see, there's plenty of time for questions um, and answers at the end. So do feel free to to add them up onto the Q and A. Uh, tool of the of the webinar. So um, let me just introduce um, us, Pericles, and and the portal for you to start off with. So for those who don't know um, who Pericles are, who we are, uh, we are a EU-funded um, research and innovation project, and 
The second bullet point here summarizes uh, what we do, and it's also how the Pericles acronym came about. So I'll let you figure that out um, for yourself, how that happened. <laughs> So Pericles is a, a multi-country, uh, multi-partner project and we use interdisciplinary approaches to uh, better understand intangible and tangible cultural heritage across eight European coastal and maritime uh, regions which are listed down the bottom here. This is our nice um, Instagram grid here so I encourage you to check it out, we've got lots of lovely images of the, the regions that we work in. Um, so as Pericles as a project, we use uh, co-development and co-design methods. Um, it's really at the heart of the work that, that everyone does across the project. And that's to engage with a variety of stakeholders in each case region. Um, and so we are, alongside this, we're developing a range of tools uh, to use in the project to engage with, with stakeholders in each region. And one of which of these tools is the portal or should I say the Pericles online mapping platform, which internally to Pericles we call the portal. So from now on, I will call it the portal. Okay, so going back kind of pre-Pericles, um, the conceptualization of, of the portal came from um, a, an art science collaboration project uh, based at the Scottish Association for Marine Science, SAMS, um, under the Mapping the Sea project. Um, and it really bore the idea of um, an aesthetic um, map, an online platform to allow users to um, collect rich, data around cultural heritage and in a spatially explicit way and uh, this is down the bottom here this is just one paper that came from this project um, you can see the links here and um, you can also see these links active on the portal itself under the acknowledgement sections so they're there for you to have a look at and now the Pericles portal um, it's a it's built on an open source uh, uh, section of software and there's a, a, a team here that have that worked together to build the portal together. So our, uh, the main user interface that you see, the nice um, design uh, front end, that's designed by our contractor's surface impression down in Brighton in the UK. And um, here based in York, there's a team of us who um, work together to design and develop the portal. So Douglas is our software developer, it's Howard, Jasper and myself here at York. And if you want to find out more about us, um, you can check the consortium page of the um, project website below. So that's us. Now the portal, here it is. This is how you get to the portal. You can go straight to the, the link here, the Map Your Heritage, um, or you can go to our project uh, website down the bottom left and you can get to the portal um, on links there as well. So really the portal is an interactive uh, multimedia online mapping platform um, and it's, it's designed really to enable collection of data and, um, and, and analysis tools for that data um, to analyze the distribution of tangible and intangible cultural heritage in maritime and coastal um, regions, eight of which across Europe. Um, so the portal really allows users to interact with the data in a number of different ways. And its aim is to collect uh, data associated with coastal and maritime cultural heritage, be able to, in a, in a spatially explicit way, to collect it, view it and um, analyse it. So this is nice because um, using uh, the portal um, for cultural heritage really um, links with different governance um, areas um, within the project. So here, these are some of the aims of the portal. They tie in really with the work that uh, Pericles team do across the eight case regions and they, they, they feed into different governance areas so such as understanding cultural heritage um, at different uh, spatial scales, um, risk mitigation, um, the conservation and preservation of cultural heritage, um, so for example the integration of existing data and new data um, allows new conversations to be had in a spatially explicit way. Um, policy integration, so the identification, prioritisation and management um, of cultural heritage assets. And sustainable growth and exploitation, so for example in tourism um, and strengthening links between communities and their, their cultural heritage and identifying new assets. So all these aims of the portal across, across our work, so for example understanding cultural heritage, engaging stakeholders for example, um, all are central to Pericles work. 
um, and the portal really underpins um, lots of work that's happening across the case regions and especially across our cross-cutting themes in Pericles, for example, tourism um, and gender. And uh, there are three pillars in the work of Pericles, space, place and identity, risk, resilience and adaptation and deliberative and participatory governance. And the portal really underpins um, these as well. So amongst all these um, aims of the portal within our work and cultural heritage, there's also a, a kind of another layer of, of discussion and research that goes on about the use of maps in um, stakeholder engagement, in um, um, encouraging dialogue um, within cultural heritage communities and networks. So for example, um, does a map work? Um, and who does it work for? Uh, which stakeholders? Um, what should be on the map when, when people come to, to, to see it? Are there things that are more useful than, than others? Um, and when do you engage with it and, and how? So we have all these questions in our mind as well <laughs> that we are going through as we work on Pericles. Um, and we'll be really interested to discuss these um, with you and um, lots of outputs from Pericles will, will be tackling these questions as well. So the portal really is, it's a, it's a tool um, to collect data, but it's also a participatory research tool as well, which is really, really interesting for us. So um, how can the portal be used? So it can be used in um, many, many ways. And I've just, I've just summarized three here, um, three ways that we're using it in Pericles. Um, one is in uh, workshops. So to facilitate group discussion across um, stakeholders, community groups, individuals. Lots of those have sadly been put on hold, um, and as you probably expect due to the current uh, pandemic, um, and work will be picking up again um, come the autumn, hopefully. Um, but again, there's the, the portal can be used for online workshops as well. There's, lo there's lots of possibilities for online um, group discussions, but it's a really nice tool to facilitate discussion in a, in a spatial way. Um, another way is through online um, citizen science crowdsourcing. So really anybody can access the portal and, and put data on it. So it's a way to reach people that you might not necessarily reach in your usual work. And then another way is through education. So across Pericles, numerous uh, partners are using um, the portal as an education tool in schools. So as well as how can it be used, who uses it? So really, as I said, anyone can use the portal. Anyone can come to the portal and um, upload um, their media and their stories and, and their content. Um, but we, within Pericles, we identified some key user groups um, who we think would be really interested in using the portal. Three here, we've got citizens and community groups um, likely to want to use the portal in an exploratory way and use some of the map making tools that are accessible through the portal. Um, researchers, developers and, and planners um, who might come to the portal with um, particular questions in mind might want to export the data from the portal um, and, and analyse it um, in different ways. And then creative and applied industries um, who may be interested in the combination of different types of data um, and the map making tools, for example, the trails uh, functions in the portal. So again, three kind of key um, areas of people that we thought would use the portal. So now, before I go into a live demo of the portal, I just want to highlight just some key features of the portal um, through, through these various images. So this is the, I've gone into one of the case regions. Um, and here you can see on the top right of the portal, I hope everyone's been to the portal. Maybe you have the portal open now, I don't know. Uh, feel free to go along with me. Um, but round here on the top right, there's the option to change the language that you see the portal in. So the portal is available in seven different languages. This matches the, the languages, uh, common languages in the case regions that we work in. Um, and here are some tools which allow the user to add data. So you can add your own data and you can create trails yourself. And that's where you find those tools. Here, the key with the categories and the subcategories under it. Here you can see um, different types of data. So you'll see official data, which we, we call it official. It's kind of existing data layers that exist out there. So for example, we have um, e layers that are available in eModnet. You can see through the portal, um, eModnet being the um, kind of marine gateway, um, marine data gateway for the EU. And then you can also see all the user uploaded points here as well. So they're all seamlessly integrated under the different categories and subcategories. 
And then here's some tools here to allow you to interrogate the data some more. And I'll, I'll show you in the demo what, what these mean. And the bookmarking allows you to save map views um, and for then for later exporting and, and printing, for example. And then we have some interactive tools in the portal. So um, here I'll show you the commenting tool. So under any data point, you can comment and interact with um, the, the, the data holder or um, other members of the community. So let's go live. Let's go into the portal itself. Here we go. So I'll just click on here. Here we go. Here she is. So this is the landing page that you'll see with the portal. Um, now, let me just take you through some of the, the key things that I've highlighted here. Um, Sarah, it's not quite visible yet. So I think you might have to switch your share to, um, to your browser screen rather than your PowerPoint. Good point. <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. <laughs> can you see it now? Yeah, I can see it now. Thank you for the reminder. <laughs> Okay, here's the portal. <laughs> I got so excited in seeing it myself. Um, okay, so again, I'll show you through some of the um, key features that I talked about and do a live demo of um, uploading some uh, data points. So again, here on the first page, you see just a brief summary of Pericles. And then on these tabs, it's a bit more information about the project um, and different aspects, how you can get in contact with us. And then in this top right section here, this is where you can change the language of the portal. So let's have a look. So let's go to French, for example. And here you see it all changes um, into French. Same with other languages here. So now let's go back to English. And the nice thing about this, so the portal, all the instructions and the text is in every different language. And you're also able to upload any of your content, um, any of your media in um, any of those seven languages as well. Um, so, but now, for example, say if um, I, an English speaker, for example, want to go and look at some um, Greek data, um, I don't necessarily speak or recognize or can read Greek. Um, if you access the portal in Google Chrome, it will give you the um, option that it will automatically translate for you. So you see here, I've selected Greek, but it gives me the option to use Google Translate to go to English. Um, I mean, we all know that Google Translate isn't, you know, seamless, but it, it at least will do a good enough job for me to understand. So you can see it's changed uh, the Greek text here to, to English. If I pop into the Aegean case uh, region here, we'll have a little look in here. You can see here it automatically changes um, all the, the Greek um, phrases and languages here to, to English. All the cultural heritage data points are switched on automatically. Just for the ease of this um, webinar, I'm going to just turn them off just so you can see what I'm doing. If I go to traditional fishing, see this is all now in English. Let's click on catches. There's a little fish. Click on there and it changes again all the Greek language to English. So that will, that will be the same for whichever is the native language that you're coming from in Google Chrome. So that's a nice way that you can, st you can see the portal um, in all different languages for yourself. So for the rest of the webinar, I'm just going to go back to English or else I get very lost. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so now let's go into a case region. I'll go into Ireland, Scotland. It just has a lot of categories um, within it and lots of data points. Here we go. So again, as I said, it will automatically show um, all the cultural heritage points. So here they all are. I'll turn them all off again, just for ease of, of showing you in the webinar. So let's turn those all off. So as I mentioned before, there's official data and user added data. So I'll show you an example of this. Lighthouses is a, is a good one. So here you can see here there's Lighthouses Inbond Net layer and it's got a little information point next to it. So if I click that on, that basically brings in the Lighthouse data for um, this case region from eModNet. So this comes in as a web feature service. So that means it just comes in automatically from eModNet. So if there are any amendments to the original data in eModNet, it'll show up in, in the portal. So you can tell that it's official data by the info, the little info icon on here. If I click on there, it'll just tell you a little bit more about where it's from um, and any kind of a brief summary of the data. So we hope to add more links into this so you can, it can take you directly to the metadata that sits in, in eModNet. So that's how you recognise official data. It'll have a little info icon next to it. Um, they're also quite big layers. That's how you'll also see it, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> so I'll turn that off.
And then you can also see, for example, user added data. So I'll just click on this one, let's say. Sorry, let's go to this one. There we go. Let's pop that there. And here you'll see um, a nice uh, point that a user's added um, to the portal with a photo, um, a description of, of the eye, of the, um, of the point, the importance. And so if I like this, which I do, I can go to add a comment, scroll down, and then I can say, I can add my comment, lovely photo, um, add that. And then you can see it appears down here and then people can reply and you can start a, a, a dialogue about this, about this data point. If I don't like what I've written, um, I can just delete my own um, comment. So I'll just delete that for now and take that off. There we go. So we've had a look at that and it gives you the coordinates here of where you've placed the point. So that's having a look at um, data that already exists in there. So there's, there's lots to look around in the portal already to explore uh, the data that's already in there. If, like me, you like to add your own data to things, <laughs> you go to one of the Add Your Data tools. So Add Your Data and the Trails tools. This is where you add your own data. So I'll say here as well, you can, you can interrogate uh, the data that's in the portal without having an account. But if you want to add data to the portal, you need to have uh, register for an account. I'll just log out of my account here. The important part of that is because when you register, you sign up to the website terms and conditions, which are um, on one of the tabs on the home page. I won't take you through this because as you can see, it's very boring and long. Um, but on here, um, it, uh, something I'll point you to is the, the licensing and the copyright licensing that you sign up to when you add data onto the portal. So um, here, anything that you submit to the portal gets um, submitted under a Creative Commons license exactly the same license that you use if you upload anything onto YouTube, for example. So there's, there's, um, there's rules there around attribution and um, sh shareability of content. Um, so I'll, that's, that's there to read at your leisure, but it's, it's, it's essentially the same as most media holding uh, websites online, like, like YouTube. So let me just log on. There we go. So now I've got an account, I can, um, I can add some content to the portal. So let's go through a little run through. Um, if I click on add your data, I click on your add your own data tool and it springs up these new tools. So here you have the option of uploading um, or drawing, you've got two drawing tools. You've got, you can add a marker, just one specific point, or you can draw yourself an area. So for example, you could draw around a, a protected site or a building or, or so forth. And you also have the option of posting anonymously if you don't want your name attributed to, to what you're putting on. So just, just for ease for this demo, I'll just show you a point here. So let's you click on there, it gives you the tool here to put a placer down on the, on the map. Let's pop it down here on this island and then up springs the data upload window. So here um, I can add uh, my title, let's call it Sarah's Lighthouse. <laughs> um, a little description about the lighthouse. It's a very lovely lighthouse. Um, the significance and values that I hold uh, with my lighthouse. And then I've got the option to um, attribute some media to it. So I can add my own um, uh, files, images, photos, uh, video, audio, and documents. Um, I can also put in links here, uh, for example, to um, YouTube content um, or images held in databases, for example. So just, just for this, I'm gonna add a nice photo of a lighthouse. Here's one I made earlier. <laughs> And category, pop it into lighthouses. So this, this will then place it correctly in the key that you, I've shown you earlier, lighthouses. You select the language that you want, that you're typing it in. Um, I'm putting it in English. And then this is the, the tags menu. So you can attribute some, um, some more information here about the, what, you're, what you're adding. So there's a few here and you can add, you can click as many as you like of these, whatever's relevant. I'll put on that it's a view. And there it is, I'll click okay. So here it is at the moment, it's a kind of in an editing um, phase, so it hasn't saved to the database yet. So if I'm happy with it, I'll click on save this data. And then that should then appear, you see there's my point. And then if I go into the key, go into cultural heritage lighthouses, there's Sarah's lighthouse down there. Oh, and there's my previous test point. <laughs> so if I look in there, you'll see here the photo and my description and my text and so, and then people can start commenting at the bottom. You also have the option to edit and delete um, if you don't like uh, what you've added there. So I'll delete it. 
um, add it there and then it should be gone and it'll be gone from the map and it's gone from the uh, the menu down here there so that is adding um, your data and editing your data now I'll show you your um, the trails function so um, I've got I've got something in mind just to show you this I'm going to zoom in I'm going to zoom in into Belfast so I'm going to make you a um, industrial heritage trail in Belfast let's say so I'll show you another tool here as well in the portal so here for most of the time you see this map it's uh, it's called the stamen uh, view it's the kind of historical uh, map view of, of the portal but if you zoom in past a certain extent if you really want some kind of higher resolution accuracy to the data and a bit more um, information about what's what's there you zoom in further and you get onto Google Maps as well. So you, there are two different types of, of, of base maps that you can see with, with the portal if, if you need to. So I'll just come out a little bit here. There we go. So with the trails, um, it's really um, a tool to make routes or, or um, a connecting a series of points together. Um, and we enter, this will be used um, a lot, for, for example, for tourist, tourism, tourism industries. So let me show. So with trails, you can either make a trail of new points. So you can add the points as you go as part of the trail and they just become their new points in the key here down on the right. Or you can make a trail of existing points already or you can do a combination of both. So I'll show you the combination of both just to show you how, exactly how the tool works. So with that, I'll go to cultural heritage and I'll go to the industrial heritage, let's say and turn that all on. So you should see lots of points now appearing here in Belfast. Now, if I go to trails and I add myself a new trail, you see all these pluses appear on the existing points. So if I, I think it should take me here we go. There's my, there's my trail. If I start clicking on these, they start to appear in the trails tool. So they'll appear in the order that I click them as well. So here I'm making a route. I could be saying to um, my mother-in-law, go to Belfast and have a look at my favourite industrial heritage sites here. So I've added those. And then I want to add my own one because there's something that's, that's missing and I've got a nice video or something I want her to go and see. So now I go to this tool here. This is the draw your marker tool. Pop that in. And then it brings up the same, the same menu that you've seen before. They add your at your point. So I'm just going to just for ease of time for this, just put in a load of gubbins just so we can show you this. Add, I'm going to add the lovely same image. There we go. Oops. Oh, I'm going to add it as a, oh, let's put it industrial heritage. There we go. And whatever, it's a building. And then, okay. So now then my test point there now appears in my uh, trail as well and it's it appears there. So I like my trail. I'm going to save it. I'm going to call it Sarah's Industrial Trail. I really like it. So save that and then that will now appear um, in the trails list. There we go, Sarah's, we can see lots of people are testing the trails. <laughs> so all trails that are made in a case region will be seen in a list in the case region. Um, so here's the one that, here's, here's one I made earlier. <laughs> um, I will, just so you can see it for ease of this, let's just close the trails key. I'm gonna, just gonna get rid of all the industrial heritage um, other points that aren't part of my trail and there you go and you'll see just the points of um, of my trail so I'll click on that there are the points and then there's the info about my points and again I can edit it and I can delete it if I want so I will delete it there we go my trail's gone so um, let me I wanted to show you as well these other two tools here so that's trails and then what I'm going to do is, actually I don't want to delete that, let me go to my old trail. This is the trail I made earlier. <laughs> here we go, so I made a trail earlier with these points here, Sarah's trail. In that trail there's these four points here. So what I can do now, and I think this might be a, a common uh, route that people might use, so I've made a trail, I can go to the bookmarks tool here now and basically, see I've done all this earlier, <laughs> let me delete that. There we go. So I can now bookmark this view. So say, for example, I'm making a trail and then I want to go and um, make myself a cup of tea. 
or go and do some more work, I can bookmark this view. So I click on there and then this saves um, Sarah's trail map, let's call it. And I'll save that okay. So now this saves this view and those points. So say I go away, I close down my computer, um, I come to the portal another day. Let's go to Ireland, Scotland again. And I come back here, all the cultural heritage points will come back on um, as, as default again. Again, just to make this clear, I'm going to just turn it all off. There we go. So all the points are off, you can't see anything. If you go back to your bookmark, click on my bookmark, it'll take you back to um, your trail and what you were working on before. So again, I can, I can now print this off or, or edit it and, and carry on editing my trail. So that's that. And then the last point is, I'll show you just the filters. So if you have all the, the points on, um, you can again interrogate and filter through the, the data points. So you might just want to see official data um, or anything that's been um, added by users, public contributions, for example, and then you can filter through by what, what's yours. You might want to look for um, documents. So you can, you can, only, you can filter out only uh, points that contain documents. And the same with the tags as well. So, for example, I probably would quite like to make a recipe map. So I, I would look, like to pick out all the points that um, have recipes in and then I can make that, I can bookmark that as Sarah's recipe map, something like that. So th those, those tools, they allow you to filter through a little bit more. Um, and I, th I think that is all I will show you from the portal. I think that nicely shows you lots of things on here. Um, so I will come back out. I'm going to remember this time that I'm going to share a different part of my screen. Oh no, actually, sorry, one more thing I wanted to show you, I remembered now. Say you go to your um, account, I'm signed in. Here it shows you a list of the points and the trails that you've added yourself um, here. And if I click on show points on my map, it's another way of seeing all the points that I've um, added to the portal. So there's everything that I've um, added, um, trails and points. So that's another nice way of seeing everything that you've added, for example. Okay, and I'm going to stop there with my live demo. I will do a new share back to um, my presentation. There we go. I remembered Jasper. <laughs> okay, so as, as, a, as just a summary and overview of the key features of the portal here, the um, several languages that the portal is available in um, to be used across, across those languages. Um, the ability to see official data and also new data and how they interact with each other. The upload tool, the trails tool, um, the ability to uh, save your view and filter through and make customize your own maps um, and the interactive nature of, of um, the commenting uh, features. So those six, six key features I wanted to highlight there of, of the portal. Okay, so um, I will say this now, the portal will never finish being developed. <laughs> It's always been development, so you'll probably see some new features and some changes as, as time goes on. So we've got some big plans for, for more things to come up with the portal and things you might have noticed or questions that you might have about um, certain tools. So I've just, I've just listed a, a few here. There are more, but um, one, one key thing that we hope to implement soon is um, being able to interact um, more with existing official data. So being able to comment and add media to it as well as then being able to add content to um, existing user uploaded points. So uh, for example, then someone could add a photo to an existing photo, for example. Um, and then I think Trails 2.0, um, it'll be nice. I think we have in mind, especially when uh, people would like to start using it to print out uh, nice maps, um, trail maps to have more colours, more lines that collect that connect the points so you can see the order of them um, and more symbology and things like that. That's being worked on at the moment. Um, a big one <laughs> is the ability to take data off the portal. So will, will you be able soon to export uh, data off the portal itself and um, expanding uh, the metadata catalogue a little bit more to have more links and then what would be really nice is um, at the moment you can share the portal um, through social media for example or however else you want to share links to the portal um, and for example we'd like to create um, electronic links to trails for example or to bookmarks and then you're able to then take those electronically out of the portal to other mediums such as social media for example so they're just a few ideas of things to come for the portal 
So how can the portal be used um, and, or how, and how is it being used um, in, in Pericles? So I will just talk about um, three different case regions um, that we in, in Pericles and the work that's being done there with the portal. Um, so this is the Vardensee uh, case region. Um, it spans across several countries and uh, so it's a, a coastal maritime region. Um, and in this region, um, it's important for making social, cultural value and heritage of fishing more visible. So the, the, the real um, priority here is to put fishing communities um, on the map. So this is important uh, because in this region, the, the value and importance of, of nature um, is, is underlined quite well, it's understood. Um, but the aspects of living near the sea and lives near the sea is, is, is not so much so the, the use of the portal is really to capture this intangible um, um, heritage, the more kind of narrated and li living lives um, of, of um, cultural heritage in this region. Um, so this is being done in um, collaboration with a range of different stakeholders in the, in the region. And um, they, the, um, this, the project group here, were taking quite a critical uh, view of um, using the map. So working with communities and stakeholders to um, view how, is the how, is is a map um, useful for the, for their needs and is the portal useful? So this will be a really interesting to answer some of those um, questions about about participatory mapping itself. Mm -hmm. And um, a second case region is in Estonia. So in Estonia, um, there's a, a real rich cultural heritage um, in the small southwest Estonian islands, um, that one of which is shown here on the map. Um, the residents here have um, certain traditions actively used for um, tourism, so that it's promoted um, for tourist needs here. So the Pericles work in this area is used to discover, helping residents to discover new ways um, in which they can use their heritage in tourism. So, for example, in this case region, the trails tool will be used um, to better promote and market um, cultural heritage in tourism in this area. Um, and also the portal will be used to help identify um, areas in heritage where tourism may be a risk. Um, to, to our cultural heritage. So again, this integration and spatially explicitly viewing different types of heritage and, um, and risks in this. And that'll all be done through workshops with um, residents and other local stakeholders. And then finally, the third case region is Ireland and Scotland. Um, this is a large scale case region um, aimed at understanding, preserving and harnessing cultural heritage um, across, across this large area. So three regions that are focused on in this case region are Belfast, Inner Hebrides and Galway Bay. Um, pressures in this area include uh, blue growth, tourism, um, protection of traditional sectors in culture, maritime um, and coastal um, cultural heritage. And there's lots of opportunities for social regeneration in the, in the area. So um, the idea of using the portal in, in this case region is um, to map knowledge and heritage, uh, to fill in gaps of, of, for example, known but non-designated heritage, and to create a spatial setting uh, which allows um, different data sets to be inputted into, social, into spatial decisions and, and decision making, uh, which is particularly important for the inclusion of intangible heritage, uh, which often um, is, is not part of these discussions and is difficult to, to, to view and collect. Um, so um, also in this case region, documenting heritage and sharing it, keeping it alive, the legacy aspect of, of um, this rich knowledge um, of, of cultural heritage in the area needs to be captured um, and, and kept alive somewhere. Um, and also the use of uh, the portal in education. So again, building into this legacy idea of using, um, working with school children to, to further develop um, cultural heritage legacy in the area. So those are the three, three examples in Pericles, the way the portal might be used. Um, and then also when Pericles finishes, what happens to our portal and the data within it? So um, I guess I guess three points here. Um, first one is the portal is um, kind of intertwined with other mechanisms for collecting data. So um, we have examples where uh, workshops have been run with paper maps and they've the data has then been input into the portal. Um, other data collection methods are, for example, vis uh, visual, uh, video making, um, interviews, etc. And all that data then um, interlinks with the portal. So there's, there's um, many ways that data is, is collected um, and fed into the portal or um, the portal is used uh, directly. So it's, it's, it's one of many tools um, in the project. 
Um, so I guess in the, in the, for the portal, there's, two, there's the data that's in the portal and there's the portal as a platform structure itself. Um, so the aim is for the data that's collected in, in the portal after Pericles finishes um, is that it will form a cultural heritage layer for the, um, for the EU that will be fed back into eModNet. Um, so then it'll, it'll uh, either as a web feature service or the data will sit there itself so it can still be um, used and interrogated um, after the life of the project. And then the portal platform itself, um, we've had a, a lot of interest from different stakeholders, from different um, projects, different um, organisations, different regions. And they're interested in using the portal for their case region. Um, and it's something that we're really interested in looking. So at the moment, we're collating the, this, um, these, this interest from, from different parties. And we'll, we'll be speaking to our um, case coordinator about this um, at, the, at the EU um, and to, to, to demonstrate that there's interest in using the portal beyond Pericles. Okay. So in summary for the portal, um, it's a really exciting tool um, to allow um, users to interact um, and share and um, engage with um, maritime and coastal cultural heritage data in a new spatially explicit way. Um, there are some key features to the portal that are already um, available and some more that will be coming soon. So again, this, this idea, the, the really nice multilingual feature and the ability to upload um, and view and, and share data in the portal. So that, and we see the portal as a as tool for not only as a tool for collecting data, and it's really, really useful in that respect. And it's also um, an engagement tool. It's a participatory process in using the portal. So we're also looking at um, the, the discourse around that as well. So in summary, if you want to, and I encourage you heavily to go and use the portal, that's, you know, where to find it. It's on this link or you can go to our um, project page and find links on there. Um, and if you want any help with using the portal, first port of call um, would be our project website and there's a help um, tab on the portal as well. And there you can see um, I've put some help sheets up there already. I'll also be adding some more some videos up there soon as well for kind of how to uh, type um, information. This is some of us at Pericles here um, at the beginning of lockdown. <laughs> It's all our home working images. But of course, you can get in touch as well through our social media channels if you have any questions or need some help with the portal. And that's, that's me done. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much, Sarah. That was a fantastic presentation and, and, and I really enjoyed um, looking at that. And I never knew that you could use Google Chrome to automatically translate other people's uh, non-English data. So that's a really good tip. Uh, for me as well thank you <laughs> um so we've got lots of lots of questions um very let's let's kick off with a couple of questions that came up early um from rika tevali uh about whether we can add data on finland and other countries that are not within the project's uh, case regions and we've had similar questions from frazane about frazane jirami about Iran and Muhyiddin uh, about North African countries. So there's a lot of interest in contributing outside of our case regions. How are we going to deal with that? Yeah, interesting. And it's great. It's, we're really, really pleased that there's lots of interest in, in using this beyond um, Pericles case regions. Um, so I, I guess technically the portal can take um, data from from anywhere. The way it's the way it's designed and structured is that it can. You could you could already at a point outside of our case regions. Um, the pr the problem currently with with it would be that it's not um, it's not moderated. So there's no one there to um, you know, check that there's no spam in there, um, and it it wouldn't be used within the project um, itself. So it's kind of structured. So each case region is a kind of a, a table in the database. Basically, it's a bin for for um, for data points for locations. So that's not to say that, um, that, so there's definitely scope to use it outside of the case regions at the moment. Um, we just, it's just not funded in our project, um, but it's, it's, it's technically possible. So we would really, really welcome any um, opportunities to collaborate and explore um, furthering and expanding the portal in that way. Thanks very much. Um, so here's an interesting question from Peter McKeague. 
as a data curator of protected sites, how does my organization contribute legally defined, uh, legally defined data to the project? So I, I would go in legally defined. So I, I guess that's coming, is that, are you talking about copyright issues and data not being used outside of that, I think, is, is, is the issue here. Um, so the data that we have... I, I think when you talk about marine protected areas, it might be that legally defined data also includes, uh, say, the boundaries of marine protected areas or say in uh, bylaws that put in get put in place for marine protected areas, particular areas that get managed under a particular management regime or something like that. I, I assume that, or uh, rather than that, it's about copyright. Okay. Um, so I think I, I think I understand. So is it about um, being able to um, demonstrate different types of? Um, marine protected area for example so you want to have a have details in there about its designation is that right i think so i imagine um so <laughs> ah yes there we go yes i'm talking about the extent of marine protected sites says peter thanks peter um so that's so i i, I think this is right um if i understand the question right i think you so you're able to um draw the areas yourself and put in information that way using the the area drawing tool or if it's something so for example if it's a if it's an existing layer so if you have it as a as a, a shape file or a, or you know coordinates or so that can be put in as just one layer so I, I think this this might be what you're talking about the the lighthouse layer that i showed you that's a flat layer of lots of different locations so it can go in like that as a as a polygon layer, as a, a load of areas. Um, so you, to do that, you'd um, get in touch with me <laughs> and then we would work with you to um, put that into uh, the database that sits behind the portal and it could be viewed that way. Thanks very much, Sarah. <laughs> so um, you, you've, uh, you've kind of already answered this really, Robin's qu uh, question of what will happen to the portal after the project has finished who will maintain it and who will pay for it. This needs to be clear to encourage people to upload data. So that's been brought up. Is there anything else that you could say about that? Because clearly that's on people's minds. Yeah, absolutely. So we have um, the, the, the domain name and the URL and the portal infrastructure and its, its existence. We have uh, um, from 10 years from when we started it. So it'll be in the what, another eight years now or so. So it, it can it can exist um, in its format after the project. Um, so there wouldn't be anybody currently um, moderating it and just checking that it doesn't get um, used incorrectly. So um, we would probably remove the upload tools, I suppose. So it could still be interrogated and data could still be downloaded. Um, and I imagine the data will also, um, as I mentioned on the presentation, at the hopefully it will be a layer that comes into eModnet. So that, that could be as a web feature service, for example, that takes data from the portal directly into eModnet and it could be used there. So the data will still be there for a long time um, and it, it's exportable as well. So the data will be there. Um, in terms of the infrastructure and the platform of the portal, um, that is that's a different discussion, uh, I think, and I think we're we're getting a sense that it, there's a lot of interest to use that um, beyond the case regions and beyond the life of the project. So we need to have more of a discussion with people who are interested in that. I think to follow that up. Yeah, and please do contact Sarah if if you're thinking of ways to contribute to that. And and maybe I think our domain name is registered for ten years at least, isn't it? It is. Yeah. So we've, that's, that's been paid for already. So at least that'll um, stay up and the server is hosted on the University of York uh, web server. So the basic kind of IT facilities will remain in place as well. So there's a couple of questions. Um, Vera Noon's asking, are you crossing your maps and, and data with that of other portals in the region? Um, there's... Uh, um, there were various kind of questions about links to the API uh, of, 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 of kind of other organizations. I see Douglas has also been answering our technical officer um, and I might 
put you on the spot in a minute, Douglas, to, to say a few things about those more technical issues and also so that people can see your face uh, and, and can associate that with the huge amount of work that you've done alongside Sarah. Um, but anyway, just back to Sarah first. So how, how can other portals interact with, um, with, with the Pericles portal? Yeah, really interesting question. Um, so, so from, from, from the way we've done it is we're, we're bringing in um, web feature services and web map services um, to, to be able to view data from other portals into ours. And as I understand, I think in our next um, set of development, we're going to be putting in a, a function so that um, you can do the reverse. So enabling our data to be seen as web feature and web map services in other portals. So hopefully there'll be that two way interchange so they can they can connect um, in that way. Um, oh yeah, I think that answers your question. And then you can also um, export the data off the portal itself and use it in um, one's own GIS or, or portal as well. But we'll be really interested again to, to hear um, who, who is doing that and 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 speak more about that because that'd be really really great to know how it's being used. Thanks. So again, get in touch with Sarah and we can Absolutely. explore what the <laughs> possibilities are. So that's great. A uh, similar question from John McNally and there's then been some discussion with uh, with, with 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 some others as well. Um, so John's uh, saying that they're they're uh, developing and they're launching a not-for-profit Discover Portrush app which includes a heritage trail. Mm -hmm. So how would you suggest we might show that on Pericles? So either the app or the, or the trail? Gosh, um, so that sounds great. Um, I think we would, again, either somehow connect um, how, where your data is and connect it to our portal um, directly. Um, it could be something that I can see actually Douglas has just said via API. I think that's to this question. Um, so there might be that we can have a direct link into, into um, the trail and where that's held to the portal and it, it will have its own place um, in the trails list there. Um, or it could be that we just hold it um, locally as well in, in the database. Um, so we'll probably, we'd look at, ideally it would come directly from yours to us so that when you make changes, they'll reflect in our portal. Um, and I, I've got a feeling Douglas has got some ideas about that, how that would work. Okay, so in a minute, I'm gonna hand over to Douglas and see if he can provide a, a summary of a few of these more kind of technical um, questions. Okay. Um, there are some questions in French. The first was um, around who our French partners were. So the Uni University of uh, Bretagne or uh, Occidental and uh, Parc Naturel de Golf de Morbihan. Um, and I think um, Sibyl has already kind of put in links in an answer within the Q&A uh, system. Um, Alain Blayo asks, uh, and I hope I'm translating this properly, but a heritage route of the Council of Europe, have we got them on the system? No. Not yet? No, so, that uh, sounds good. That, that sounds good. Um, so, so we'll, 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 so we'll double check that and Alain, if you want to again, contact Sarah and we can yeah. follow up on that. Lovely. Um, and also he's asking if we're interested in a project on postcards, I think. The, um, carte postale. I'm not sure if that means postcards, but again, I think I've contact us and we can discuss further. Um, <clears throat> so finally, uh, before I let, hand over to, to Douglas, Sarah, in terms of um, site upkeep after Pericles, have we considered approaching a museum or, or a number of museums like maritime or fishing museums, asks Emma Chironi. Yeah, yeah, good question. We, we've, we've been approached about this from um, a real range of, of, of organisations and, and projects and companies, and many of which are museums, which seems a really, really um, natural place for, for it to go, which will extend the um, interactiveness of the portal and the data. Um, yes, so I, th I think especially, I think we've had some from Estonia that have, um, that have asked already. Um, yeah, so that is on our radar. And if, if, you're, if you're affiliated and, and are interested in this as well, please do get in touch, because I think we, we're building a really strong case for this. <laughs> 
Thanks so much, Sarah. So it's been a delight um, having you and, and thanks so much for all the detailed ways in which you answer the questions. Mm -hmm. um, so just to briefly hand over to Douglas Wang. So Douglas Wang has been the man behind the scenes really, who's been developing the API and the, the database structure. Uh, Douglas, can you just briefly put your camera on so people can, can see you? Hi. Um, Hi, Douglas. I can't show my camera because... Um, no problem. Yeah. There's a few <laughs> questions. Could you, could you just uh, say a little bit about um, kind of opportunities for, for linking to the API um, and, a, and summarize a couple of the other questions that you've been answering on the, on the Q&A about some of the technical aspects? Yeah, okay. Um, at the moment, we, don't, we haven't opened our APIs, but there's a possibility in the future that we can enable that. Um, so please contact Sarah in case um, just um, for, if there's anything you can do. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> and um, so you've answered other questions. Um, who can delete data on the portal? Can people only uh, delete their own data? Yes, um, you can only delete the data you upload. But we, all, we in, in the next question about the moderation, because we, we have the admins looking um, at the data, so they also can delete the data if it's not appropriate. But as a right. user, you can only edit or delete your own data. Mm -hmm. Great, thanks very much. And then Peter, uh, who previously asked, asked the question around marine protected areas, uh, and they're, they're curating uh, some data for that, he says, we can provide a WMS or Atom feed. Um, so are we able to, to take up feeds like that? Perhaps if other people also have similar kind of uh, data sets that they could feed? Technically, yes. Uh, that's one of the area we want to um, implement by uh, adding more uh, data into our portal. Great, thanks so much, Douglas. So, um, Sarah, do you have any kind of closing remarks before I uh, close the, the webinar? Um, I will just say thank you again for everyone for attending. Um, please do go to the portal, use it in anger, um, upload um, anything that you, that you have and use it with your families, your colleagues. Um, and if there are any questions or further discussions, then please do uh, get in touch with, with myself. You can find me on the Pericles um, website. My contact details are there. Um, or you can um, get hold of me through any of our social media channels um, or so forth. Thank you so much, Sarah. And I just want to uh, again, thank you and Douglas uh, and others in our team, Howard Cambridge, uh, who's also been instrumental in developing the concept and everybody from our other uh, Pericles partners, you can see all the logos here uh, because there's been a, a whole range of people um, involved, particularly also Lars and, and, and Jordi and a whole range of others who've uh, a very, uh, um, spent a lot of time really kind of thinking through the design of the portal and, and providing suggestions for a huge range of kind of improvements um, that we're continuing to, to implement. So stay tuned with the, with the portal, engage with it, upload onto it. It would be great to see lots of engagement. Um, yeah, work with it um, and send us any feedback. And then finally, I'd like to point out uh, our uh, next seminars. So on the 30th of September, we'll have uh, a next webinar on ethnographic uh, documentary that Pericles is developing um, and as a tool for the advancement of intangible cultural heritage. So Luce Witteveen and Pauline van Tel from the University of Wageningen will be talking about that. Uh, and they've developed a fantastic film about uh, the Tessel um, uh, Whalers Museum. So uh, it, it's, it's absolutely fascinating. It's a lovely uh, documentary that they'll be presenting. And then in October, um, Dr. Laura Ferguson from Queen's University of Belfast will be talking about conserving Longbarians, not cultural heritage in a climate of change. So stay tuned for the date for that. Um, keep track of the Pericles activities through our website, pericles-heritage.eu. Um, 
and uh, and our social media channels. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.